हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू स्वीटी स्पीक्स ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल दिस इज सिस्टम वेरी लॉक इसेंशियल सीरीज टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द टॉपिक इंटरफेस लेट्स स्टार्ट विथ अंडरस्टैंडिंग व्हाट इज एन इंटरफेस इन वेरी सिंपल वर्ड्स यू कैन टेक ऑफ इंटरफेस एज अ बंडल ऑफ वायर्स what is the purpose of interface why do we need this bundle of wires which is called as interface the reason is i need to connect my design blocks to the test bench there will be a lot of signals inside your design there will be a lot of signals inside your test bench design and test bench need to interact with each other i need to pass some inputs to the design i need to get some outputs from the design and read it in my test bench how will this happen i need to connect these two blocks which happens with the help of an interface another important point is interfaces can contain other interfaces it is possible that there is an interface present inside another interface this is possible in system very law say this is your design this is your test bench and we have an interface like this it is a connecting bridge between your design and test bench this is how interface is it's like a bridge which is connecting your test bench and design you will pass the inputs from test bench to the design you will read the outputs from the design into your test bench and analyze them the next point to understand is what does an interface contain your interface can contain connectivity information synchronization information how your signals are getting synchronized with respect to clock which means it can contain the clocking blocks also then it can contain functionality of communication between two or more blocks how two or more blocks are going to be connected with each other how they are going to communicate with each other this is an optional information and it can contain some parameters constants variables functions tasks processes or continuous assignments these are also optional so this is what your interface can contain connectivity information synchronization information how your two or more blocks are getting communicated with each other it can contain parameters constants variables functions task processes continuous assignments next thing to understand is about the interface ports your interface ports can be input it can be output or it can also be in out which means it can act as input as well as output any of these directions is fine for your interface ports this is how you declare the interface you use the keyword interface and end interface and in between that you will have the code for the interface this is the name of your interface and whatever code you want to write inside your interface we saw what all things your interface can contain it can also contain your clocking block it can contain tasks functions some assignments all that things whatever you want to include you can include here this is your interface declaration now let's see one very simple example of an interface so that we understand how to declare it here if you see we have enclosed the interface inside the keywords interface and end interface apb if this is the name of my interface apb interface this is the interface for your apb protocol it is taking an input pclk pclk is one of the signals inside your apb if you know apb protocols you will know all these signals so a pclk is your input clock then it has various other fields like address write data read data enable signal write signal and select signal all these are the inputs and one thing to notice here we give it logic 
because this particular interface is to be connected to various different blocks it can be connected to design it can be connected to test bench in your design something can be input but in your test bench that can be output so while connecting or there is a concept of mod port which i will explain in the further lectures we decide the direction but while defining while declaring the interface we put everything as logic please note make a note of this another thing is we saw that in interface you can also have parameters now let's see one simple example how to define a parameter how to have a parameterized interface an interface which has a parameter this is interface and interface inside this my interface code is there the name of the interface is trans it's a for transaction i have a parameter d width which is for data width i am specifying it 31 the width of d width is 31 then i also have an input signal clock now if you see inside my variable data i am using this par parameter for deciding the width your d width minus one down to zero this will be the width of your data it means your data is 31 minus 1 which is 30 down to 0 it means just 31 bits of data and then you have the address 16 bit and you have enable signal this is how you can have your parameterized interface one more thing we can see is how to have interface with clocking block your interface can also have clocking blocks we had already covered clocking block in detail in the previous video lecture in this series system very log essentials if you see there is a video lecture on clocking block where we have covered these this concept of clocking block in detail along with the coding example you can go through that and here also i'll explain whatever is required so this is again interface and interface intf is the name of your interface it has input clock and inside the interface we are also declaring a clocking block if you can see clocking cb cb is the name of your clocking block and end clocking inside clocking and end clocking the code of your clocking block exists here if you see the clocking block will get active at pause edge of clock here we have specified at the rate pause edge of clock so whenever pause edge of clock will occur this particular clocking block will be active now in clocking block we have discussed about the concept of input and output skew your input will be stabilized this much time before your clock and your output will be driven after this much time right so this is the concept of skew and here i am giving default skew for the inputs is 7 nanosecond default skew for your output is 5 nanosecond if you want to change you can change for any particular signals but default will be this and then i have an input enable and one output data this is how we can also have clocking block inside the interface another thing which we can see how can we have interface with a task we can also define task inside the interface we had talked about it interface can also contain your task and function now let us see a code for this again between interface and an interface you will have the code for the interface it has the input clock it again has a clock input and it has certain signals certain variables it has ac it has ready it has send and a 32 bit data and say you want to create a task to send your data which will take the inputs send signal is one input and data bus so these two signals will be input for your send data and then you can create a task whatever task uh, definition you want to give you can give it whatever this task will do with the these signals that you can give and then whatever other declarations you want to have for your interface that also you can give 
and how will you call this interface you can call it inside a module i have just shown for example say this is a module here you are passing it a interface int fi so this is your interface and this is the instance of your interface and here you are uh, saying you are giving the instance name of the interface dot send data and then you are giving the send signal so this is how you can call the interface inside a module and this is how you can have a task inside your interface right now we had seen what is interface what it contains uh, what are different ways of declaring an interface? We saw a simple example. We saw parameterized interface, interface with clocking block, interface with task. Now let's see what are the advantages which interface is providing over the traditional connection. Traditional connection means instead of just using interface, what if I can directly connect all the signals of DUT to all these signals of test bench that also I can do. But there are certain advantages which I'm getting by the use of interface due to which I'm using interface. Let us understand those now. The first advantage is all your signals are grouped together in one interface and they can be represented as a single port. You don't have to connect each and every signal separately. You can just use the interface as it is as a whole and it will directly connect all the signals all the ports which are defined in the interface will be connected to each other this is one of the very big advantage that's why a single port handle needs to be passed no need of having multiple signals or ports so it reduces complexity it reduces human error a lot of things because of all these things, you can also reuse, say, uh, only one particular signal has changed, maybe bitwise or anything. So you don't have to go on and change in every file. You can just change it in interface. And then since the interface is being passed to all other modules, all other modules can take that change. So that's why it also helps in reuse. The interface handle is passed across the modules and components. So whatever change you make in interface, it is re replicated in all the modules or components where your interface handle is passed. 